I, I want to go to, uh, first of all, your reaction to what you heard in the court today. Well, I, I was with Justice Sotomayor when she talked about the stench of just making a naked political decision here and what that does ultimately to women, what it does to our rights, and what it does to the authority of the court and the American people's belief that this is a court that expands rights and this is a court that will protect the American people. And they're just, they just indicated they're willing to throw that out the window because they made a promise somehow and back in the, in the, as the, before they got nominated, they said one thing in public, always knowing that they were going to do this to Roe versus Wade. And that looks like that's where we are today. This is the day it happens. You represent uh, one of the states uh, on which, in which this decision will have no effect. You represent the state of Massachusetts. The Massachusetts legislature uh, re uh, will not allow uh, any kind of changes and, and restrictions on abortion in your state. And so this is a decision that, if it goes the way it's apparently going to go, will not, in fact, affect all 50 states. There will be states like New York, Massachusetts, California, many, many, many others, where mo the majority of the population actually is, uh, who won't be affected at all. And let's listen to what Justice uh, Sotomayor said today about the women who will be affected in those Republican-controlled states. When does the life of a woman and putting her at risk enter the calculus? Meaning, right now, forcing women who are poor, and that's 75 percent of the population, and much higher percentage of those women in Mississippi who elect abortions before viability, they are put at a tremendously greater risk of medical complications and ending their life. And now the state is saying to these women, we can choose not only to physically complicate your existence, put you at medical risk, make you poorer. I didn't hear a single Republican appointed justice who understood those points. Yeah. And you know, that is part of the point is that when abortion is outlawed in these states, and we know that we've got 20 states who've got their toes right on the line, ready to end abortion as soon as the Supreme Court says that it will permit it. But we know who that's going to fall hardest on. It's not going to fall on the women who have means. It's not going to fall on the women who can buy a plane ticket and go to New York or to Massachusetts or to California. It's not going to fall on those women. It's going to fall on the women who are poor. It's going to fall on the women who already have children and can't leave. It's going to fall on women who are working three jobs. It's going to fall on young, young girls who have been molested and may not even know they're pregnant until deep into the pregnancy. That's who this will fall on. This is not only taking away a woman's right to make a decision. This is taking away a woman's right to continue to build a future for herself. You could uh, convert uh, the, the Supreme Court opinion, Roe versus Wade, into the federal statute uh, mm -hmm. passed by uh, perhaps Elizabeth Warren leading it through the Senate. What are the prospects of that? It's a filibuster problem. Uh, so look, we've got the Women's Health Protection Act that just says as a matter of federal law, the decision to uh, continue a pregnancy is a woman's decision. She can consult with anyone she wants to. She can consult with her mother, with her partner. She can consult with her doctor, with her priest, with her rabbi, but it is not up to the state, it is not up to the government to come in and interfere in that decision. Um, we've gotten it through the House. I believe we could pass it in the Senate, but we can't get 60 votes for a, to get past a filibuster. This is one more time when we see the filibuster blocking the will of the majority. You know, anything that, in, that, that enjoys support across this nation at the level of 70 to 80 percent is something we ought to be able to bring to the floor of the United States Senate and vote on it. And I believe what would happen is the rule of Roe 
would then be the rule, not just in Massachusetts or California or New York, it would be the rule all across the country. We've got to get rid of the filibuster. And we heard Brett Kavanaugh say today that if you did that, the Supreme Court would act, would absolutely uphold it. He said that yeah. it is absolutely constitutional uh, for the Congress to pass such a law, for any of the states who that have already have their own laws uh, protecting abortion rights. Uh, so what you're proposing is something that Brett Kavanaugh has said the Supreme Court would completely go along with. Right. But, but it is the reminder, isn't it, of the price we're paying right now for this technical rule in the United States mm -hmm. Senate uh, that keeps us from being able to move forward. And so now we can just start down the list. We need to pass voting rights. We need more laws around gun safety. We need a law around immigration, right, and a path to citizenship for millions of people in this country. And we need a law to protect the right of a woman to make her own decision about whether or not to continue a pregnancy. And the filibuster is blocking us, blocking us, blocking us, blocking us. It's got to stop.